Hello, today is April 3rd, it's 8.49 a.m. Uh, this is a discussion about um, the bioweapon COVID-19 versus geopolitics in the year zero. It's formed from my own observations, perceptions, and extrapolations, and I'm going to be talking about others, other people's observations and perceptions and extrapolations and where we might differ. I'm going to discuss uh, COVID-19 as though it's a bioweapon and um, uh, point out how we are now experiencing the difference between static versus dynamic uh, mindsets, which is the belief mindset versus an evidence-based or observational-based mindset. And we see this appearing all around us, and we can make our own observations, filter them through our own perceptions, and do some extrapolations that may aid us in scenario planning as to what might be happening in the future. So let's, uh, let's quickly examine uh, how we get here. And we see that uh, it's possible in early December of, of uh, last year of uh, 2019, it's possible to uh, have an observation that my, the Communist Party of China, CCP, has gone batshit. Uh, this is episode three of Smoking Bats, by the way. And they're reacting really oddly. They're reacting so oddly it grabs one's attention, even on uh, mainstream media reports of how they're reacting. And this is before there was really much in the way of discussion about um, any virus or you know the potential that it was um, a zootropic uh, creation that came from eating odd animals. Okay, this is before any of that. The Chinese government, the CCP actually, not the government per se, not the civil service, um, but the arms of the uh, Communist Party of China went just crazy, and it was really odd because it was not like SARS or anything else. I mean, it was easily tied by December 9th to a disease outbreak. By the 10th of December, it was easily tied to Wuhan, um, and by the 25th of December, by Christmas of that year, uh, it was easily ascertained that uh, the... Chinese Communist Party had made the obser oops made the observation that um, uh, something nasty had happened. Probably had then been informed by the by the twenty fifth. They certainly, uh, even in the lower echelons, knew that it was a bioweapon. But I think on the ninth is when Xi Jinping knew that it was that a bioweapon had, had escaped. It's my observation from the way they reacted that they knew a couple of things, that it was a bioweapon and that there was an existential threat to the Chinese people, and if not to the Chinese people, certainly to the Communist Party of China and any and everybody associated with the release of this bioweapon. Um, I think it was accidental based on how they reacted. They did not appear to have, in my opinion, uh, logistics set up, even, uh, even at a small level, as though they knew it was going to be released, okay? So one could hypothesize that there might have been, say, some kind of internal power structure within the CCP. And say, this is, I mean, what I'm stating now is all speculation, is just a, um, a hyperbolic uh, description of what could have happened in a sort of a movie script, and then we'll dismiss it. But see, the thing is that the, um, the reaction of the CCP uh, was as though they were caught off guard. There were no logistics stored. There were no safe areas. There, were, there had been no um, isolation of people prior to the release. And one would have seen that had one anticipated the release of a bioweapon in order to cause your internal enemies in the Chinese government trouble, right? So a dissident faction could arrange to have the bioweapon released and um, Xi Jinping and the main parts of uh, the CCP would have been blamed for it in their thinking in this scenario, in this plot. And um, uh, that would have accomplished the goal of this dissident faction, which would have been the removal of the existing power structure of the CCP, allowing a power vacuum and allowing them to, to come on in and take over, right? But that assumes a couple of things, and that assumes that you survive the bioweapon that's been released. And in order to do that, you would have to make um, preparations in advance of that uh, uh, 
to some significant level in China just in order to have the manpower to aid you in the uh, subsequent period of a, of a power vacuum. And there was no evidence of that whatsoever. Those kind of things would have been reported um, in, and they would have had to have started back in March or April of the previous, of, of 2019. I mean, they would have had to have started a year ago in order for this to have been a coordinated kind of a thing where dissident faction releases it and jumps into hiding real quick and lets shit happen and then comes out later. And that's really the thinking on bioweapons at all levels, right? Um, now, all bioweapons, insofar as the concept is concerned, must have some kind of a key that allows you to turn it off for the people you want to have up and functioning uh, doing your bidding in this uh, ultimate global uh, power structure kind of uh, battle thing, right? And so it, it just so happens, if you look at my two previous videos to this in the Smoking Bat series, you'll see that there is reinforcing evidence that the key to this is vitamin C, yada, 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 chugga gangsters, go look it up. I've said it for four months now, and, I, and I'm getting tired of saying it. Uh, and there's a lot of people that'll say it uh, for me that have been through the experience that that have had the, the disease and said it works, uh, this chaga gangster approach. So go to Twitter, look it up, go to other areas, look it up, go look it up, uh, other people's videos that have used this approach and you'll see that it does indeed work. So now, anyway, continuing with the geopolitical aspects of this, the point of all of this video here is to get to, to um, projections for our immediate and far, far future. And so, if we look at how the Chinese government reacted, the CCP, uh, the governing body of China, they were caught flat-footed. Um, uh, there was some small attempt at recovery in early uh, December, and then it was clamped down thinking they could control the situation, which, as we know, didn't last beyond uh, December 25th, and they started going into chaotic reaction in January finally leading to shutdown on January 22nd, just before the uh, Lunar New Year thing, right? Or the Chinese New Year. And so the, um, the observation that we can make from all of this is that they had no plan other than previous plans for SARS, H1N1, MERS, etc. Okay, now there was no drugs, there was no vaccine for SARS, uh, MERS, uh, all of these things can be symptomatically treated, but the drugs they have do not address the underlying issues and basically don't save a lot of people. And again, the SARS-1 was an isolation issue, right? Uh, they, they clamped down and shut, uh, shut things down then and were able to kill it. This one has obviously escaped isolation and has, and COVID-19 has properties that SARS-1 did not. Anyway, so we can, we can continue with our observations. Um, and we see that um, uh, through uh, February, the Chinese government starts developing, or the CCP, Communist Party of China, starts developing all kinds of cover stories. Just throwing them out. They're throwing spaghetti on the wall as fast as they can to see what's going to stick. It's done. If anybody grabs hold of it, they feed it, feed it, feed it. Okay, so about that time through uh, February, I start noticing that there's a subgroup within the uh, Western media, oh, Western alternative media, Western batshit, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter media, there is a, there's various different demographics in there, all of whom bring to this their own, observ own observations, <laughs> uh, perceptions, and extrapolations. And there's this group that I'm calling the VD group, right? The virus deniers. And they're saying, oh, it's a scam, oh, it's 5G, oh, it's a plot to take down the deep state, oh, there's going to be mass arrests. And they're all over the place, alt-right, alt-left, all the way in between, and even the woo-woo and the alt-woo-woo. And I noticed something very interesting. The Communist Party of China, CCP, starts feeding these people um, by a bot trying to raise, I'm assuming it's a CCP, all of these people's channels start gaining uh, madly. Now there is a dynamic there. Okay, they're obviously going to attract those people that are that are in that same mindset. So their channels could be expected to grow some level with the proportion of that mindset within the general population that they reflect. But this growth is outside of that. This is the kind of growth we we saw with the um, Edge of Wonder channel way in the woo-woo world where they just came on. They were just a couple of videos and then wham, huge amounts of growth, all fed by. Uh, bots underneath in order to try and, and game the algorithm and gain some organic traction and draw more eyes and views. 
And so it, it dawns on me at that point that, okay, my, or my observation was that um, there was this activity um, beyond what would be expected, abnormally beyond what would be expected, within the VD group. In the, in the VD group, the virus deniers were getting uh, pimped and pumped up all through the internet and Western media. I made some assumptions that it was uh, probably not the the anti-deep state guys plowing money and advertising dollars into this. I look into who's putting the advertising dollars into the social media at that point, and lo and behold, there's a lot of uh, Chinese media uh, crossover payouts into advertising in Western media, even though there's basically no activity in China because China shuts down. Bear in mind, China started going into lockdown officially in Wuhan in January 20. Second, now it's still in lockdown. All of China's in lockdown, nothing's come back. There's no industrial pollution. They're reacting to what they call the second wave. And this is not the second wave. The second wave comes later. This is phase two of wave one. Uh, for bioweapons, this is a design. It's a known pattern. It's predictable as to how it'll go through the population. The effects are quite anticipated or, or able to be anticipated you can you can predict this shit right and uh so we now have a bioweapon loose we have the planet trying to react to it the observation is that the ccp is reacting in particular ways to pump up anything that'll throw blame any other place than them so they try and pin it on the army u.s army they try and pin it on the war games they try and pin it on the trump administration they try and, and pin it on the, um, uh, uh, pump up the story that uh, it's a deep state operation to take down the Trump administration. They try and pump up the story that it's the Trump administration uh, deep op to take down the deep state. They pump up the story that there's going to be hundreds of thousands of arrests and then somebody's going to flip a switch and it's all going to go away and magic will happen and the whole world will be the way it was. Well, I can tell you right now we're in year zero, all right? And in year zero, whatever the hell the last year was, we're not going back to it. It's the end of that era. So coincidentally, our year zero and the age of Aquarius started in the year that we had designated 2020, which is now. And so uh, it's now the age of knowledge, and we will not be going back to the age of the fishes, all right? The Piscean age. So um, uh, in this new age, observation, and correct perception of your observation, knowing your own limits and what you're thinking about and how your own filters alter it, can lead to extrapolation that may allow you to guide yourself uh, through what's going to be a very uh, dangerous time. It is now a dangerous time. Not going to be. It is now a dangerous time. A single mistake. You know, taking your mask off at the wrong time in the grocery store, touching the wrong thing. And you've got it, and you build the viral load, and off you go. Go see the other previous videos about how it works. Okay, so a single mistake can cost you your life. A single mistake, not cleaning your shoes before you go into your house, can cost you the life of a loved one. Um, we're obviously not going back. China is not going to be able to be the world's producer anymore. They're trying desperately right at the moment, the Chinese Communist Party, to pump up their own consumer economy to suck out the work they can get out of those people that are still standing and able to get back to work. And they're, they're struggling. They're struggling mightily. Uh, and they're not being successful. Now, this gets to the point of the whole thing here. The reason that the Chinese Communist Party is not being successful has to do with this idea of static versus dynamic belief versus evidence or observation. And so we can say that with certainty that under the static column, we can put the CCP, okay? The Communist Party of China is a static mindset organization. It's not capable of flexibility. It's not capable of innovation. It's capable of copying, stealing, altering, uh, trickery, being clever, um, being evil, being duplicitous, but it is not capable of creativity. Uh, we can say this because their view of the world is static. There, we could go into why uh, there is a tendency for a particular kind of thinking based on the nature of the language being um, uh, ideal graphs as opposed to the graphemes, the individual letters here, 
and how there's a certain kind of flexibility of mind that comes from the, what we think of as the Roman alphabet. But there's no point in going uh, that deep on it. We can state that the CCP has a rigid mindset of CCP will dominate China forever. It, it has always been this way and it must be this way. The firm believers believe in the glory of the CCP and the collective. It is um, beyond a religion. It is a, uh, it's part of a mind control cult, basically. They're not allowed to, they could not think any other way. So, so they don't have the ability of being flexible in the face of this accident. And thus all of their reactions are on a pre-programmed level and were predictable once I, I, I and others began seeing how they reacted on December 9th with this particular speech that Xi Jinping gave and then all the subsequent events. And so at that point, I, I knew it was a bioweapon, and I started making reactions. It was hard to get my wife's attention. You know, she thought I was fucking crazy. No one else beyond her would even listen to me, but I started doing shit. Now, at that point, it was I had to have confirmation before I started shouting it from the rooftops because it's one thing for me to put my own uh, situation at risk by doing some weird, screwy thing because I think I see a bioweapon has been released halfway around the, the planet based only on... Uh, some pretty sketchy evidence in the mainstream media, a few words here and there, uh, and then later on some whistleblowers who, you know, you can't validate any of that shit. And my wife says, well, that's all that internet conspiracy stuff. So, you know, so you run into that kind of an understanding. But I was correct. And I knew I was correct in December. But I had to wait through January to get, wait into January to get some more confirmation that I could hold up as real evidence. Um, uh, plus it allowed me to get some, some, strategically good information that led to the whole uh, Chaga gangster protocol on this, right? And it works. Okay, so uh, so my approach is dynamic. I'm waiting for events, I'm looking at evidence, I'm altering my plans as that evidence and the perception changes on the, on the fly, on the moment. And it's fluid and it's continually going. And so my evidence observation approach is far better than the belief system of the CCP. Now they were reacting continuously, etc., but a lot of their energy was dissipated because of their belief system and the way in which they must operate within that belief system of we're correct, we're correct, we can't have any of these other views, let's go shoot those doctors, they're causing us a PR problem. Um, you know, they're, <laughs> they're saying, the doctors are explaining, hey, people are dying from this wacko thing that makes no sense, and blah, 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 but that was inconvenient for the CCP's belief system at the time, right? And so they shot them, and, and we lost a lot of heroes of Wuhan. Um, or strangled them or whatever it is. Anyway, so uh, um, the observation, perception, extrapolation works for everybody, static versus dynamic. It's only, if, but if you do observation and you're in the static mindset, your perception is, is formed, informed, and controlled by your belief system. And so your extrapolation is going to be bullshit, absolute bullshit, because the, the whole uh, unfolding of reality will be far too fluid for any belief system, any rigid structure of understanding uh, to frame it. Because bear in mind, if you've got a belief system, if you think this is 5G, then you causing all of this and they're gonna turn a switch and the 5G will be disabled and everybody will be able to, to breathe free again, then you have to take all of the observations that are coming on into you and you have to spend the time to shoehorn them into your belief system to help prop up that belief system. If any of them don't shoehorn in there, you've gotta either throw them away or shatter the belief system. Most people can't shatter their belief system. Uh, only those individuals that are functioning at a dynamic level, right? And so this is, this is uh, to the martial artists here, right? This is kata versus no way. Um, and so, um, you know, so it, it's fluid. It's, it's um, uh, and take in the observation, apply your perception filters, but know you're applying your perception filters and see if there's ways to perceive it without those filters that may benefit you. So you're continually checking your own observations and your own perceptions back and forth against each other as you go along. You're not trying to shoehorn them into a belief system. You're saying, is this real? 
if I can't determine it, is it real, can I falsify it? If I can't do that, can I put some level of confidence in it that, well, it's probably mostly real. I don't deal in numbers, you know. Mathematics doesn't describe, it just simply quantifies, and quantification doesn't give me any, a good feeling. If I've got a military asshole saying, well, we're 98% sure, I know we're really fucked and he's 100% wrong, because you cannot apply, apply numeric values to the uh, fluid dynamics of real life in real life. You can only do it as a, as a backward-looking analytical kind of thing that, that leads to academics, but not to on-the-ground, in-the-moment decision-making in a valid way. And so I can argue that my decision-making was months ahead of everybody else, and many people have benefited because they follow, followed behind me. I wasn't trying to get followers. I'm simply saying, this is what the fuck I saw. This is what's got me motivated and, and uh, freaked out, and this is what I'm doing, this is why I'm doing it, and off I go and do it. I don't give a shit. I'm not looking back. Okay, so I get ankle biters. I get, uh, you know, um, ankle biters snipping at me, these, these YouTube personalities saying you're full of shit, blah, blah, blah. But what they're doing is they're still trapped in their belief system that A, the old system's going to come back, and B, they're trying to shoehorn their observations into this belief system without understanding their perceptions are screwing with their observations in order that it may fit into those belief systems. And they're not even able to get up to the extrapolation point because they still think we're going back to that previous to year zero. They just don't get it, see? And so uh, that leads to these kind of videos, right? Now, this is the cool part of this. There's, <laughs> this, is, this is sort of an uh, uh, interesting observation. Many successfully, or many successful people happen to be mentally ill. And that mental illness, for whatever reason, in their particular aspect of that mental illness, can be applied, and it ends up making them successful. You have many of these individuals as self-acknowledged mentally ill people. That is to say, they, they acknowledge, they don't think like uh, the standard um, uh, sheeple out there, right? Well, a lot of these people caught on to this kind of stuff real early, and their perceptions and their observations are continually being tested by reality. They know that this is the case, and so they become very strong at defending those perceptions and, and observations and extrapolations. Now, these mentally ill people have come to certain conclusions, and they're starting to basically, uh, you know, these successful individuals with peculiar uh, uh, bends to their their viewpoint are starting to put these things out there. And so we have one person who's acknowledged to have had mental issues, you know, um, episodes, that kind of thing in terms of his thinking, and that's Alex Jones. Now, Alex Jones is coming on out, and he's uh, next week, next Wednesday, going to say who Q is, right? And I think personally that we need to do that, that Q now needs to be wholly unmasked. They better step forward and do a mea culpa, or indeed, uh, the consequences will be quite severe. Because the issue is that Q is linguistically acting as an agent for the CCP in supporting the CCP's belief system. And I can go into details as to how that is the case. In spite of the fact that many Q adherents won't hear this, won't understand it, won't accept it, because they are also trapped in a belief system that Q is all good and a superhero and, you know, everything's going to be good and all this, and in this childish, immature understanding of reality. Okay, but in fact, Q is now an agent of the CCP, as is, for instance, in my opinion, David Wilcock, because David Wilcock, the woo-woo guy, is uh, getting his numbers pumped up by bot farms that if he's not controlling them, the CCP is. And his uh, message is, don't worry, only blah, 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 super small percentage of people are being affected by this flu. And it's like, dude, you know, he's selling, he's selling a message that supports the CCP globally and nobody else. I mean, it supports him. He's got all these people that think he's a great pastor of the new age, the Jimmy Falwell or whoever he models himself after uh, for this particular niche market of um, new age religion. And so he's making money off of them, uh, and so it's supporting him. But in a grander sense, he's, he's trying to reinforce a belief system that is false. He's trying to say it'll go back to the way it was. Uh, he doesn't understand uh, much beyond um, 
uh, the, the, anything outside of his body, you know, I mean, he really doesn't understand very much. He's not a great thinker, uh, in spite of the fact he claims to be a uh, best-selling New York Times author, which, you know, that merely proves that a lot of other people out there bought the scam he was selling, not that he was a great thinker. Uh, he doesn't have any original thought, and his, um, his conclusions are um, affected by his perception in a way that he's uh, totally ignorant of, and that perception feeds back and controls how he observes things and what he observes, as it does with everybody. But in his case, it's this weird little uh, squirrely squizzle loop uh, that it gets into, uh, circuitous references, and we end up with him coming out the a line saying, all will be well, don't worry. The deep state's going to take down, um, or be taken down in these 100,000 um, uh, secret indictments. Never mind that the, there's mathematics that prove that this is physically impossible in the United States that there ever could be that many secret grand jury warrants, right? Uh, but in any event, and he says, and it's all supported by Q. And so the, it's, it's the securitist reference stuff. Now, the problem, it's okay in woo woo world. It was okay in previous to year zero. There was very little harm to it other than the individuals he was scamming. Um, but, you know, they got something out of it. It's an entertainment. It's not reality. And he was putting out retain, entertainment, and they paid for it. Uh, but now he's putting out entertainment that uh, supports the CCP. And the problem is, at this stage, that some of us recognize that the whole planet is at war with the CCP. Okay, the whole planet is at war with the CCP because they fucked us up by releasing COVID-19. Them and nobody else. It may, they may have paid for it. They may have worked with uh, elites in the Western system. They may have worked with labs in the U.S. They may have worked with labs in Canada. They may have been um, uh, involved with corporations out of uh, London. Uh, in all of this process, there may have been any number of USA, Canadian, and, and British citizens involved with this, but they were the ones that fucked it up and let it out in Wuhan. Uh, they didn't control it, so they are demonstrably incompetent, and when it comes to something that can destroy all of humanity, unlike a nuclear weapon which might destroy some small fraction of humanity, here it is, humanity versus the people that unleashed this bioweapon on us. So the CCP now is desperate to deflect blame to wherever, and they will pay anybody any amount of money if they'll throw up yet another distraction as to where this could possibly have come from, right? And so they're pimping up all kinds of people's numbers. And they've got algorithms on their side that manipulate YouTube, manipulate Twitter in terms of the responses, the engagements, um, you know, the retweets, etc. right? And they are just pumping up those threads that they want to try, uh, or anything in their spaghetti uh, to the wall approach to try and deflect blame from uh, the actual cause of this. And so their, their rigid belief system is, is basically what's being fought here. It's a war between all of these people that have a static uh, rigid belief system. And that's all these religious people. That's all the people that think the comet did it. There's a comet coming. Uh, you know, all of these people that have a belief system that's going to frame their approach. This includes, and let's get into it, this includes doctors and military um, and hospitals because they all have a hierarchy, a structure, a protocol that they must follow because that's the organizational mind. They don't have flexibility within that organizational mind to understand, analyze, stop, and see if that model applies in this moment. And they just fall into the habit of doing the protocol. And so that's why people are dying, and, and that's why these people don't understand. Because their, their mindset, their belief system, is that we're dealing with a virus. And if it's actually a bioweapon, well, then dealing with it as a virus, as a disease, may provide you with some small hints as to what it's capable of and how it'll behave, but it does not in any way define the totality of what you're going to be facing. Uh, if you think of it as a bioweapon, your mind is instantly opened up because you realize that some human may have designed something into the virus in terms of how it works and how it reacts, that it will be outside your um, perception filters. And so your observations of it as a virus 
are failing. And your observations of it could suddenly change if you took the, the assumption that it was a bioweapon. Then look at those observations through that perception filter. So instead of seeing it as a disease, an infectious disease, a tropical disease, any of these other models that your computer has ever whipped out for you, think of it as a bioweapon and look at what happens to your observation as a physician, as a military guy, as a hospital. If, if you're a hospital, you're going to have to know that you're, you're under attack and you need to do things radically different. Well, we're seeing some of that in uh, how New York is responding, right? It's still using the Italian model and it's still failing and things are still growing in terms of how bad it is. Uh, but uh, there is some small level of hints here in the United States that we now have a government taking this bioweapon idea very seriously and, and using the bioweapon filter of the uh, uh, perception filter to the observations and coming up with certain extrapolations that are leading to actions that we as citizens can see and we can reverse that process and say, aha, the government's perception here may include the idea that this is a bioweapon and we need to do what we can to uh, get our um, uh, resources positioned in case we actually are facing a physical invasion. Now, I don't think this is the case. I don't think the Communist Party of China has the capacity any longer to maintain to do more than maintain their own status, and even that is failing. Um, from my own observations, my own perceptions, and my own extrapolations, uh, I think that that failure will be acute and visible to most people in about four months. It may be acute and visible to the military uh, within a month or so. They may even start be starting to get hints of it now. But of course, there also are militaries, all military in the Western world, even in Russia and so on, they're all starting to suffer from the, um, the bioweapon. And so they've got other shit going on uh, now than uh, planning or thinking about a um, retaliation war with whoever let loose the bioweapon or whatever. You know, they're not even looking at it. There are, I'm certain there are people that are thinking about it, but the, there's no action being taken in an organized manner at this, this stage. Uh, to, to get retribution or to do things about the bioweapon, but the CCP is sure desperately afraid that that is the case. And they know that that retribution and, and blowback is going to come from their own social order, from outside, and they're, they're just tripping about it. Plus, they got their own people dying, all the stuff they're doing is not working. They, they now have open revolt against uh, Xi Jinping's... Um, uh, what do you call it, the cooperative agreement group or whatever, the military group and the subgroup and the banks and so on that basically provide him as power. And they're, they're being isolated. They're, the Xi Jinping's group is aware they're being isolated. Now they've got open uh, challenges to their authority, all based on this, uh, you know, boy, you guys fucked up uh, line. You know, you let this virus out at the bare minimum. And we know you didn't plan to do it because none of us are safe. And we got Chinese people dying all the hell and gone. And so, uh, and it's not over. It's just barely started. Now, bear in mind, uh, China has been going through this essentially since December. And it was unacknowledged for two months until Xi Jinping and his uh, cohorts uh, shut things down on January 22nd. Uh, so, but you have to figure that, that basically you're looking at um, four... Jeez, only four months. Uh, so look at how much the world has changed in four months. Most Americans think it's only changed this month or, or this much in three weeks. And so they don't have a clue because we're four, they're four months behind what's actually been going on in China. And so four months from now, then they'll really realize that I think that China's not coming back. None of the stuff is going to come back from China. We need to have uh, all of those factories rebuilt here. We, we have to rebuild all of our machine tools in order to build the tools to build the factories. That's how, that's how uh, far back we are. And so uh, four months from now, we'll be getting into that stage of realization because everybody's um, observations will be running into a new perception filter. Because, from, because four months out, it'll still be ongoing. There'll still be lockdowns globally. Uh, it'll still be a bioweapon. It'll still be having these effects. There'll be, there'll, it'll, people will still be dying. The hospitals will still be overloaded and, and collapsing. There won't be any relief. Um, it'll still be ongoing to the extent that humans have contact with each other. 
because it is a bioweapon out and about in the environment now. And so uh, we'll still have the woo-woo guys that will be maintaining it was 5G. Uh, we'll still have the woo-woo guys maintaining it's all an op. Uh, we'll have the other guys saying, oh, well, you know, any day now, this is four months from now, right? And they'll be saying, hey, you know, oh, by December or next January, uh, you know, sure as fuck, those, those arrests are going to happen. Um, and uh, we'll still have all of those batshit people still processing all their observations through their built-in perception filters that are based around belief, not evidence, not, and they're not fluid. They're not, uh, it's very difficult to be evidence-based and fluid-based because you have to form your underpinnings. You, you're kind of like a wily e. coyote, you know, you got to imagine the grounds underneath your foot and step on it. <laughs> because you don't have the institutional social order support uh, for the observations and the perceptions and extrapolations you're making because you do not have belief. Belief, by the way, is an interesting word. If you actually trace its history all the way back, you find out that we have a derivation that is really odd because all the way up into Sweden and all the way over in Sanskrit, separated by centuries, separated by ge geographically by many thousands of miles, we have the same uh, structure, the, the, all the way down through Sweden, through the Teutonic people, through the Huns, um, into uh, the structure of English. Now, we have this word belief, but we also have the same word coming from, same, um, uh, same uh, phonemes, but not necessarily the same grapheme because, uh, you know, the same character, because in Sanskrit they used a different alphabet, but it was said the same, and it meant the same, and it means I wish. And so belief means I wish that to be true, okay? I believe something. Well, I wish it to be true. Belief is an attachment of an emotion to uh, a perception filter, and it is its own perception filter. And the believing mind is a unique state within the, the human mental uh, construction. And many people live their whole lives in belief mind and are quite happy doing so. Um, uh, many people have their belief minds run up against a hard reality as we're suffering right now and the belief mind crumbles and along with it that view of reality and along with it many people will crumble as well and we're also seeing that happen now okay so uh, just a bit of practical advice if the people around you are getting really bad shit bear in mind nobody's ever gone through a bioweapon release on this planet before no one's ever gone through as far as we know, well, at least in modern humanity, no one's ever gone through a humanity-wide uh, crisis as we're going through right this moment. So every one of us needs to forgive ourselves for our own batshit craziness and do everything we can to tighten up your sphincters and get, a, get control on your mind. And, and look hard at your observations, look hard at your perceptions and your extrapolations so that you can control your behavior. Um, you know, usually I don't get that preachy, but these are kind of like desperate times. Uh, and, the, and the idea here is that you're going to find that, in my opinion, if you just go into evidence-based and, and use the idea of, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen, but I know what I can do right now. I don't know what's happening in this moment, but I can grasp this and control that, and I'll, and I'll think about it as I go along. That seems to be a, a valid approach to this, right? Now, we're going to have um, Alex Jones, hopefully... Um, expose Q. This will shatter many, 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 many belief systems. All right? There'll be denial, there'll be outrage, there'll be all kinds of problems. Um, but we've got to do it because those fuckers are supporting these bastards. As long as we don't, as long as we're in, in denial about this and dealing with this as a virus, then everybody in the whole organizational mindset is fucked. Okay, because they're going to react to it as a virus and they're going to perish because it is a bioweapon. We're only in uh, uh, phase two of wave one. All right, this is not, or if we want to think about it, if we want to call it wave two, we're in wave two of segment one, episode one, year, year zero. We're in wave two of the virus within year zero. There's going to be the virus in year one. There will likely be the bioweapon in year two as we go forward here, because this is a bioweapon. Unless we deal with it as a bioweapon, it's not going to go away. Um, that being the case, you understand that governments can't come out and say, everybody's going to be in lockdown until December of 2022. They just can't do it. You know, there'd be riots globally. 
everybody would at that point, the uh, any authority government might have would instantly evaporate. Uh, as I predicted, elections in this country, in the United States, may not happen, okay? Also, as I predicted, Biden was never going to be president. I doubt he'll even survive his first encounter with COVID. Um, he's, so, he's so far gone. Uh, and so much of the Democratic Party is ancient, old, creaky. Uh, the whole infrastructure, the political power structure is, is like prime victims of this. Uh, COVID's going to go through um, uh, the existing elite power structure, uh, like shit through a goose. That's another sign that the CCP did not know that uh, that this was going to happen because they didn't warn their elite buddies. Okay, they're all in this together. The elites at the CCP are really tight with all the other builder burgers and all these fuckers all along that particular layer of humanity's uh, uh, social political power structure. And they know that they're all intertied. They know they're independent, interdependent. Um, so you know, instantly should the CCP take over the planet, they've got real problems because then there's no external enemy. And the only enemy of the CCP is the people. And that freaks them out because they know they cannot, cannot win. They cannot sustain against CCP versus people. So anyway, so uh, as we go forward here through year zero, we can extrapolate certain things. Um, we can extrapolate that, that the lockdowns Let's just draw a line, timeline. Let's just say that that was January of, of year zero. All right, zero year. So that's that's January of zero year, where we are in, in 2020. And this is when we first saw the Chinese officially locked down. And the my expectation is that this bubble of lockdown for China extends out essentially in an unlimited fashion. And the reason that is, is because the Chinese can't tell the people that they're dealing with a bioweapon. They have to enforce the idea it's a virus and they need the lockdown in order to prevent the people from rebelling against the CCP for poisoning humanity and the Chinese. Chinese are gonna be really pissed. Chinese people are gonna be really pissed about all of the deaths. They're already really pissed about the whole, whole thing. And we're in the age of Aquarius, so all the energies have changed. The Piscean age has passed. We're no longer in, in um, clumping behavior. We're now in knowledge behavior. And that leads to um, a lot of people going over to evidence-based and dynamic thinking and not being wrapped up in the belief structure. So until the CCP admits to the, their own people that it's a bioweapon and certain things have to happen in order for this to be cured, they're stuck. They're fucked, right? They can't change anything. That also extends to any government that is unwilling to accept this as the actual diagnosis of what's going on. You notice Iran, India, um, uh, Russia, uh, and even in the U.S. Intel. And now, like on Zero Hedge, like just this morning, I was looking at Zero Hedge. Like the second article down there is how this, I think he's a doctor. Let me check here real quick. Oh, crap, I don't know where it is. Anyway, um, uh, and he was, uh, you know, he's going on about the the virus not being, we can't discount the idea that it escaped from a biohab. And that's the easiest way to say it. It was an escape. It was a fuck up. It was an incompetency on the part of the CCP. Doesn't mean the CCP can survive this or weather it. They killed too many of their own people. But he's at least willing to acknowledge that the it's a bioweapon and we need to think about it as a bioweapon or we are also as fucked as the CCP. <coughs> so... Um, the takeaways here for USA, we will be stuck in the same bubble until somebody in government says, fuck the CCP, it's a bioweapon, and we need to do shit like it's a bioweapon. Once we do that, then we can come on out, we can say, okay, it's a bioweapon, and we're, we're, we've got some, um, we're, and everybody isolates still for another month here, but we've got these trials going on for ways to deal with it as a bioweapon. Fuck the idea of dealing with it as a virus. We know that it does this, that, the other thing. We suspect it does this, that, the other thing. And here's our protocols, here's our solutions for this uh, approach of the bioweapon. If we're successful, we don't have to worry about isolation because we'll, we'll basically isolate all the humans from being able to be attacked by the thing, right? And if you're, if you're immune, immunocompromised, we can still aid you, right? We can still help protect you from this, taking the load off of everybody. 
we're seeing some success with, um, you know, the significant level of, or, or the level of mortality in those hospitals that are using um, uh, high dose vitamin C instantly, as soon as you show up and you think you've got it, whether whether they get a confirmation on COVID or not, as soon as they you show up, they start jamming you with all kinds of vitamin C. Those hospitals are showing a significantly less uh, of a fatality rate and significantly fewer ICUs and CCU um, uh, patients as a result of changing the dynamics of the cohort. And, and, and it's cheap, it's effective, they're using L ascorbate, it's easily available, it's easily administered uh, by an injection, uh, it's vitamin C, it's not gonna harm anybody, and it works. And so, uh, you know, this is a certainly a way, this is part of the Chaga gangster stuff. And the Chaga is a mushroom that is known to be loaded with vitamin C. Chaga is its own uh, vitamin supplement. If you were to just chew on this stuff constantly, there would probably be no reason to take uh, external vitamin supplements, right? But uh, Chaga varies from tree to tree and how much it gets and so on. But nonetheless, it has a, um, a very harmonious uh, interreaction between its antiviral components in terms of the the other components within it and the vitamin C within it, they're all uh, built around each other, so to speak. So it boosts the vitamin C in itself and in your body. And uh, it's not only harmonious, it's the supreme antiviral. It's also known as the um, mushroom of immortality. Anyway, so getting back to our extrapolation, if we don't take the, the bioweapon chaga gangster approach, we're gonna be stuck in this kind of a scenario until their social order here in the West collapses and then I'm not going to worry about it anymore. When that happens, there's not going to be any restriction on me. I won't have the my beach locked off. I'll be able to go down and fish for food. I'll be able to talk to my neighbors that have survived, that, that took this approach and, and were healthy. Uh, we'll be able to go crabbing and, and, and rebuild, right? That's what we'll have to do. I'm too old to participate much in the actual rebuilding of things. But, uh, you know, I know shit and I know how to do things. So I'll help that way. And in the meantime... Uh, the society, the social order, will re-evolve. But that's the whole thing about year zero. It need not be that way, okay? Um, it needn't be Mad Max world. It needn't be all of us going back to super primitive times. We're, we're going to go through this period of transition into something. We're going to go through this transition. We're in it now. Uh, it's going to demand different things of you. It demands different things of you now. But we can change this outcome here by changing our observations, our perceptional filters, and our extrapolations. So if we observe that it's a bioweapon, if we observe that our perceptions are limiting us in how we might deal with a bioweapon, but then we are able to, to know that our perceptions are limiting and we can change that perceptional filter, then we can approach the bioweapon differently, we get creative, and we come up with new solutions. That very instant that we change our perception to it as a bioweapon and start altering our thinking from a virus and all of our failed attempts to control it, then we, we see instantly it's a bioweapon. And of course our, our efforts to control it are gonna fail because we've been treating it as a virus. And then instantly we have new hope because we're gonna try new things. And we're no longer trapped in this battle of despair. The despair squid is not squirting its ink all over us, okay? We're, we're suddenly free of that because we have changed our perceptional filter that is, that is controlling how we observe. And that controls how we extrapolate. So I can extrapolate a period of time where uh, I think it'll probably be something like the US government, but it might be some other government. But I can, I can extrapolate a period of time where there will be some individual. Maybe that individual will be a colonel that's promoted to president simply because everybody else has died. Um, maybe it'll go that way, right? Maybe it's some colonel right now that works for the Joint Chiefs and pretty soon over the course of the next six months, everybody's going to die above it because they're old and they're, they're prime candidates. But this, this individual will say, it's a bioweapon. We can't react to it this way anymore. We've got to do this other stuff. And so um, we do the other stuff and things change. And we change the outcome here by changing our observational uh, filters through our perception and we extrapolate new outcomes and we then attempt to make those outcomes manifest. So I'm not into the idea of 
supporting the CCP like David Wilcock and Corey Good and, and uh, all these batshit crazy woo-woo fuckers, right? Um, who are saying uh, anything other, they're trying to say anything other than the Communist Party of China did it. Now, Q is saying that blah, 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 but they keep pointing back to the deep state. They keep pointing back trying to shift blame away from the Communist Party of China. They're trying to screw with everybody's perception filter and alter the, their observations because of that. So I don't like the extrapolation path that Q is on. So I say fuck Q because uh, they're supporting my enemy because I know my enemy is the Communist Party of China because they fucked up and they let this bioweapon out. Now, I don't think there should be bioweapon labs anywhere. I think we need to research this shit, but I don't think we should have bio labs the way that we have them structured. And, but in any event, they exist. I didn't build the reality, but I know CCP fucked up seriously. And they're paying for it. They're dying right and left. They were when the, when the deep web got shut off. You wouldn't believe the, the number of CCP people freaking out uh, over their own illnesses. Anyway, so we can change our extrapolations, but we cannot change our extrapolations until we change our perceptional filters, until we change the language through which we describe our observations. If we describe it as a virus, people will die. If we describe it as a bioweapon, people may still die, but other people may live because we're gonna do things differently. And we'll take new risks because we don't have time to treat it like a virus. So there are things that seem to work and we can, we can compound on these and we can change things on moms. And so I think that there will be somebody, like I say, a colonel or somebody in authority who will make the, the decision to be creative, to come on out and say it's a bioweapon. We have to think about it as a bioweapon. And they can even say, we think that, you know, uh, or that we can say deliberately, we're not going to examine how it came about now. We're going to save all the evidence we can, but we're not worrying about retribution. We're worrying about survival. That kind of shit gets people motivated really quick. And uh, it also changes the mindset, right? So we've been attacked, it was a sneak attack, and we're ignoring the attack? We're ignoring the, the, you know, the destruction of our homeland, that kind of thing, simply because we don't wanna think of it as an attack? So this is a, this is a strange age, this is year zero. Uh, it's COVID-19 bioweapon versus geopolitics, and everybody's perceptional filters, their observations, and where they are on this dynamic here. You note that most people are over here. The people that are surviving are over here. With respect, get people to pay attention. 